do-it-yourself smart irrigation. This video is for anyone who uses drip irrigation. Smart drip irrigation scheduling uses much less water without affecting the yield. This do-it-yourself technology is extremely simple. All that you need is a steel pipe and a storage container. The technology is perfect for poor smallholders. The volume of water emitted by each dripper is controlled by the prevailing weather conditions affecting your plants. The water level in the storage container tells you when to start irrigating and when to stop irrigating. Do-it-yourself smart irrigation takes account of evapotranspiration, the soil type and the depth of the root zone and it is called root zone scheduling. Step 1. How to make a soil moisture probe. Use an angle grinder to cut a long slot in a length of steel pipe. The slot is used to check the moisture of the soil inside the pipe and the position of the wetting front. You can also use the angle grinder to sharpen the bottom of the pipe. Step 2. How much water is needed? Allow the soil to dry out over several days until the soil is dry between the surface and the bottom of the root zone. In my garden, the bottom of the root zone is about 150 millimetres below the surface. Place a measuring container under one of the drippers and start irrigating just before sunset. While irrigating, check the moisture level in the soil by hammering the steel pipe into the soil near a dripper. Stop irrigating when the position of the wetting front is near the bottom of the root zone. Suppose I check the moisture level in my garden every five minutes. After five minutes, the wetting front is about 70 millimetres below the surface. After 10 minutes, 100 millimetres. After 15 minutes, 130 millimetres. And after 20 minutes, the wetting front is about 150 millimetres below the surface. And so the wetting front has reached the bottom of the root zone. The volume of water in the measuring container is the amount of water that each dripper should deliver during the irrigation event. It is called the dripper control volume and it is the volume of water required to moisten the soil from the surface to the bottom of the root zone. For my garden, the dripper control volume is 400 mils. Step 3. How much evaporation is required between irrigation events? You need to know the evaporation in millimetres before the soil is dry between the surface and the middle of the root zone. Position any container with vertical sides at a suitable location so that the evaporation from the container matches the evaporation near your plants. Fill the container with water and weigh it. At sunset each day, check the moisture in the soil until the soil is dry between the surface and the middle of the root zone. For my garden, the middle of the root zone is about 100 millimetres below the surface. At sunset after one day, the soil is dry to about 20 millimetres below the surface. After two days, 35 millimetres. After three days, 50 millimetres. After four days, 65 millimetres. And after five days, 80 millimetres. At sunset after six days, the soil is dry to about 95 millimetres below the surface. And so the soil is dry to the middle of the root zone. Reweigh the container to work out the volume of water that has evaporated. The number of millimetres that has evaporated is the volume of water divided by the surface area of the container. And this is called the root zone evaporation. For my garden, the root zone evaporation is 11 millimetres. Step 4. How to choose a suitable evaporator. You need to know the correct surface area for the evaporator so that the root zone evaporation occurs between irrigation events and the dripper control volume is delivered during the irrigation event. Calculate the correct surface area by dividing the dripper control volume by the root zone evaporation. Then choose an evaporator with vertical sides and with the correct surface area. For my garden, the dripper control volume, 400 mils, divided by the root zone evaporation, 1.1 centimetres, is equal to 360 square centimetres. My evaporator is a container with a surface area of 370 square centimetres. Step 5. How to set up the evaporator. Position the evaporator at a suitable location so that the evaporation matches the evaporation near your plant. Mark a high level on the inside of the evaporator about 2 centimetres below the overflow level. 
mark a low level so that the gap between the high level and the low level is the same as the root zone evaporation. For my evaporator, the gap between the high level and the low level is 11 millimetres. Position an irrigation dripper so that it will drip water into the evaporator during the irrigation. Step 6. How to use the evaporator. At sunset, fill the evaporator with water until the water level is at the low level and start irrigating. Stop irrigating when the water level reaches the high level. Check the water level at sunset each day and start irrigating again when the water level has fallen below the low level. As your crop grows and the water requirement of the crop changes, you may wish to repeat the process of root zone scheduling. Most weather-based irrigation controllers use data from a weather station to control the irrigation scheduling. Despite the fact that DIY smart irrigation is very low cost, it performs better than weather-based irrigation controllers. DIY smart irrigation uses the prevailing weather conditions in your garden rather than the weather at a weather station. For example, DIY smart irrigation responds to the actual evapotranspiration of your plants rather than the theoretical evapotranspiration at a weather station. This is particularly important if you are using a greenhouse. You can automate root zone scheduling by using the DIY solar drip irrigation kit and the measured irrigation upgrade kit with level sensor. These are available from the online shop at the measured irrigation website. The soil moisture probe is also available. For more information, download the unpowered measured irrigation training manual for smallholders from the measured irrigation website. Thank you.